Does it sound good? Sounds good. Okay. Hello, I'm Daniel Suarez. You're listening to Transit Lounge Radio at Login 2018. I always wanted to feel like a radio guy. <laughs> now you are a bona fide radio star. Yeah. <laughs> but you're actually a filmmaker, I yeah. hear, and you're doing some really interesting work. I was watching some of your videos last night on Vimeo. One of them, What a Ride, just was uh, so exciting and joyful. So do you want to tell me a little bit about what you're doing in general and what you're doing here specifically at Login? I'm a filmmaker. My background was advertising, so I used to be an advertising creator for eight years or whatever, and so, uh, yeah, I always wanted to do, like, creative stuff, come up with ideas and, like, you know, do just cool creative stuff, I guess. Um, at some point, I found that I couldn't really express myself through advertising, and I started doing my own films and photography. So that's why I'm headed, you know, like, to just go. So that's why I am now, um, working as a director. Uh, mainly right now, documentary stuff and commercial stuff, going slowly but surely into the narrative space, too. You seem to have an interest in people who have quite quirky, uh, you know, hobbies or pastimes. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. I think I just, the films that I'm doing right now are more like giving answers to my curiosity. It's like people that really inspire me or that I'm attracted to. Just like, it's almost like, I like to have this uh, what the fuck uh, meter. It's kind of like, if, 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 if you tell me a story, I say, what the fuck, then I'm, it might be an interesting way to get started, you know. And that's what I try to do, like, with these guys that race on the beach, they race cars from 1920 on the beach. So that's like when I was like, when I saw it visually, I was like, what the fuck? The roller skaters in San Francisco, when you see them, it's, it's amazing what they do um, and how they don't care about the outside world. You know how they care about just what they do and they, they, you know, they don't care about what other people might think. And I think that's like a really cool um, way to see the world, you know. And as I'm doing these films about these people, I learn about myself. So it's, it's uh, maybe the last three or four years have been like kind of a self-discovery uh, time, maybe you could call it like that, by doing these films. Yeah, no, I think that really comes across in the, especially the the passion for like speed and the free, the feeling of like escape and freedom. And there was a super lovely quote you had, which is, you can sit on your couch and be safe or you can live. Yeah. And I mean, I think that sort of finding that inspiration as well to get out outside your comfort zone and do something that challenges you or scares you is, I guess, you know, why we're all here. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a cliche, you know, and what I realize is just that all cliches exist because it's like such a truth, you know, and then it's just like a lot of people just talk about it all the time and then cliches become cliches. It's really that, I mean, like, we all know, like, the older we get, how quickly this just goes away, you know, and like our time is very limited here, you know, and like, it's really that, like, that was one of the reasons why I, I decided when I was 29 to become a director, and I wish I did it earlier, but, you know, you cannot choose those things. But it was like, that's what I really want to do, cinema, you know? And, like, if I get to become a great director, that's amazing. If I get to become, like, a not amazing, but, like, I wake up every day and I do these things and I love it, you know? I mean, I think that's what it is about, you know? Like, waking up, looking at the day in front of you and being happy and then falling asleep, you know? with a good conscience, you know, that's all you can do. I think. There's a really nice quote from Leonard Cohen talking about writing, and he says he always writes first thing in the morning so that he doesn't spend the day kind of with the debt to the muse that he hasn't caught up on. But I, I notice that brings us to another of your films too, Solo, which is the freelancers in New York City. Yeah. So you're obviously also looking at and talking to people who are really following that sort of creative passion and making it into a business. Because, of course, everyone wants to have their lovely creative dreams, but then how do you make a living from it and how do you actually wake up every morning and that's what you do? That was a kind of a branded project. What I try to do is, like, I try to pick my projects very, very carefully. So I do a lot of stuff that's not shiny, obviously, also to pay the bills. But then, like, when I... Every time, so often, there's a even branded project that I, I believe in in what it stands for. So this was standing for like the freelance world and like uh, how you how you basically live a, a more meaningful life as a, as a worker in New York City, you know, where everybody goes with the dreams, but then the reality crushes on you and, you know, you have these huge bills you have to pay. You, the rent is super high, you know, like, so you have to be always kind of working. That's, you hustle. yeah, you've been talking about Berlin. Like I used to share the studio with like four or five other creatives, like graphic designers mostly. And we're talking about like if you would be living in Barcelona or in, in Berlin, where your overhead costs are so much lower, you could be like spending much more time. Maybe you could work 30% professional, 70% on your personal project. When you're in New York, it's harder, you know, because it's so expensive. So you almost have to be doing a lot of commercial work all the time. So 
do you think that you've sort of found, you've made that shift now, that, that what you're doing now is telling stories that matter to you more than the kind of commercial work? Yeah, I do both. Um, but definitely, like, when I started working in advertising, I was really intrigued by it. And I had this, like, romantic view of, uh, you know, doing something important, uh, creatively meaningful. And obviously, it's hard in advertising. You do a lot of stuff that goes sometimes against what you against your beliefs then you can find brands where you, you believe in what they stand for and, and then it's easier, you know. Then usually you get less money for it also. <laughs> so it's, it's really like how do you play the system in a, in, a, in a healthy way, you know. I'm not talking just shit about advertising and like that's just how it is, you know. Those are, those are the, the rules of the game. So how are you going to play it now, you know, to your advantage? So I try to mainly do stuff that I believe in. I think there's really an interesting shift as well that I think a lot of companies are seeing that the people that they want to buy their service or product also want to know that they're having a meaningful impact in society. And so this whole idea of you know impact and social entrepreneurship and social change is something that I think is becoming a little bit more of a sort of corporate ethos. But I think from so many people wanting to have more meaning in their lives and in the way they live and saying, I have the choice in what I buy or what, or what I work on. Yeah, that's a cool point. I think um, I never understood how... Like you, you turn on TV or whatever, and like some brands, like how they talk to people, it's just like, it's just so weird, you know. Like it's a, it's clearly advertising language, you know. When like I feel like brands should be talking, like we are having a conversation right now, you know. Like if I'm a brand and I give you something that makes your day better or like that adds just a little, I'm not talking about changing the world. I don't believe in that that you do that through advertising, obviously. But like you could like you know, if I can put a smile on your face while you're walking to to work and you see a outdoor ad or like you see it, YouTube I mean you have to put these pre-rolls okay but at least put something that if I if I want to see like the goals from my team from last weekend that I see I want to see the goals I don't want to see a, I don't know a, a banana ad in front of it you know <laughs> or like, if it's a banana ad or at least make it somehow meaningful to my experience that I'm watching you know there was a really funny ad that was popping up here when I was watching stuff on YouTube that was nine minutes long and it was a guy at his computer yeah. talking about like Bitcoin yeah. and in Lithuanian and so yeah. I could never and I'm like who watches a nine minute yeah. long ad yeah. like people have short attention spans there's so much to choose from I think that's a really interesting like I think what you know what creative people can learn from advertising too is how to get your message across in a really clear way and also how to figure out who is the audience mm. for what you want to say like who's going to care about that and who's actually going to connect with what you're saying because I think you're right I think that you know you can't just paint advertising with this brush like oh it's all evil it's you know sometimes it's actually offering something useful or something yeah. good yeah i mean 99 uh, of advertising are just spam but like it's not necessarily because of the agencies or of the creatives it's just like a bunch of different things that come together you know you have an idea that needs to pass through 10 people 10 people need to approve 10 people need to like it so if it's a little bit of edgy one of these 10 people are going to say something against it is going to die you know so like yeah i, I agree with you like a nine minute uh, bitcoin in lithuanian like i mean uh, ad yeah this just shows you how like with the world we live in you know like people think if they make something longer it's going to be better because they can say more i don't know what people think <laughs> but um yeah it comes back to that simple question like the thing that we're putting out into the world is it adding something or not if it's not adding then why are we doing it and so um what are you doing next like what are your what are you working on now what's your kind of current projects i'm finishing right now a uh, a documentary, a short 15-minute documentary um, that we're going to submit for like film festivals and stuff. It's about a sport called Hayalai. Um, it's, uh, it's about this guy that plays it. Hayalai used to be a really famous sport in the 60s and 70s. Like the president of the U.S. would go and like everybody would dress up and go. And now it's a sport that died out. Like nobody watches anymore. But there's a rule in Florida where casinos can only open if they have dog races, horse races or Hayalai attached to their venue. So this guy has been playing this sport for 26 years and nobody's watching him. So every day he goes play. So I, for me, that's like a lot of these stories. Like, it's like, what the fuck? Um, and then I'm working on a couple of uh, narrative pieces that I'm going to be doing really soon. Um, what is Highline? I don't actually know what that sport is. It's a sport that originally comes from the Basque country. It's, it's like three walls, kind of in the front and the side and the back. And then here's the audience on the right side. And they have this like kind of cesta in their hand. It's called cesta. It's like a basket. And they have to throw the ball against the wall. The other guy needs to catch it. It's the fastest ball game in the world, actually. It's funny. It's like, you know, I didn't know it existed, you know. And then you go there in Miami and they have these huge arenas and they are like totally empty, you know. It's just like when I do these films, 
it always needs to end up to a bigger question. It's a very specific topic. It couldn't be much more specific than it is, but it's a universal question, you know, universal question. It's like, this guy has been playing this for 26 years and nobody's watching him. So it made me think like, would I do my films if nobody was watching them? You know, would you do this podcast if you knew that nobody was going to listen to it? Maybe. I would do it for the pleasure of your conversation <laughs> and to meet all these amazing people. But absolutely, like, yeah, that, that thing about what drives you and what keeps you going with something, like where do you find that internal passion if you're not getting external validation, I think is a really interesting question. That, that's, that's actually a really good point. Like when I, that, that maybe is like the, why I also left advertising and started, not left, I still freelance, but like why I left mainly advertising and started doing my own films. is like when you stop doing things for... Um, going viral when you stop doing things for other people to pat your back and say this is amazing when you really truly find that one thing that comes from that you feel on the inside and you put it out that's a very very special thing it took me a long time to understand that but like once you get that you will not let go of that because that's a very that's true art you know that's a truly special thing and we start up doing things because we think like oh we do this and we it might get us famous or whatever like st stupid things like that and After some time, you understand that that doesn't matter at all. You know, it's the process. It's 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 like you doing this podcast. It's like d these moments that stay with you. And then in the end, if people like it, that's amazing. But that shouldn't be the reason why you do it in the first place. Yeah, I think you're so right. If you're doing it from a place that it's something you have a passion for, you want to explore, you're trying that experience, that's what makes it work. Our time here is up. Thank you so much for talking to me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Cool. I'm looking forward.